peaceful start to the miners' strike. It was quiet everywhere except for one small incident in Nottinghamshire when police intervened to allow safety men through 30 strong picket lines. Elsewhere, pickets stuck to union instructions that there should be only six men at each point. In many places, pickets didn't bother to turn out, but instead made preparations for action tomorrow. With industry expressing fears that many firms will soon be going to the wall if the strike goes on, a new scheme to get the miners back to work. Tomorrow, the NUM president, Mr Joe Gormley, is seeing a business consortium which is prepared to pay miners £2 a week on top of the coal board offer. It would continue until the relativity's decision on the miners' case is known. Young Conservatives meeting at Southport have voted in favour of keeping back Social Security payments from strikers' families with a voucher system in cases of hardship. Proposals to make the unions responsible for maintaining strikers' families are expected to be included in the Conservative Party's election manifesto to be published tomorrow. But it's thought that the manifesto will also state that it's no part of Conservative policy to cause suffering to the wives and children of strikers. And a reminder from the Home Office that the final day for applications for postal votes is Thursday. It applies to the disabled or people ill in hospital and those who are working away from home or who have moved out of an area since the last electoral register was compiled. From the Middle East, there are reports that Iraqi and Iranian troops have clashed in a border area. According to Baghdad Radio, 23 Iraqis were wounded and more than 70 Iranians killed in an air and artillery battle. There is no Iranian estimate of the casualties. The Foreign Secretary, Sir Alec Douglas Hume, has arrived in Washington for tomorrow's conference of major oil importing nations. On his arrival, Sir Alec said, unless the energy crisis was tackled urgently, the world could easily face a trade recession. Stephen Weed, the fiancé of the kidnapped newspaper heiress Patricia Hurst, has promised that neither of them will testify against her abductors if she is returned safely. Mr Weed, who was with Miss Hurst when she was kidnapped in Berkeley, California, said he made the promise so that her safe release would not be jeopardised. Miss Hurst is being held by a radical left-wing group who have so far made no ransom demand. In Northern Ireland, three soldiers have been wounded today in two shooting incidents near the border in County Armagh. Meanwhile, in Belfast, security arrangements at the Royal Victoria Hospital are being reviewed. Last night, gunmen opened fire from its grounds at a group leaving a pub. Two men were killed and the wife of one of them, a mother of nine, was critically wounded. A report from Philip Whitfield. The gunmen bypassed an army checkpoint and drove into the hospital along a route used by staff and visitors moving out of a Protestant area into the neutral grounds of the hospital. The gates leading into the Catholic Lower Falls district were shut. The gunmen jumped out of their car and lay in wait for customers leaving O'Kane's, a Catholic pub across the road. When three people emerged, they opened fire with automatic weapons, spraying the pub with bullets. The two men were killed instantly. Mrs O'Connor lay on the pavement, hit in the stomach. The attack, thought to be an indiscriminate sectarian killing, was over within minutes, and the gunmen escaped the way they'd come. The MCC tour, and it looks as though England's opening batsman Jeff Boycott will be fit for the second test in Kingston, Jamaica, which starts on Saturday. He was hit on the arm by a ball from fast bowler Dow yesterday, and although his arm is badly bruised, it is not broken. And finally, another day of storms brought flooding to many parts of the country. The worst of it was in the west and southwest. In Gloucestershire, the River Severn overflowed its banks after one of the highest tides for a century, leaving riverside cottages marooned and their gardens under several feet of water. By tonight, the waters were going down, but a watch is being kept on many rivers in the West Country with forecasts of more rain and high winds on the way.